All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of FinTech Fridays. Uh, I've got a special guest uh, with us. Uh, looks like yeah, our guest is joining from his, uh, his RV today. Chase Connor, welcome. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get back in a minute into the uh, into your uh, surroundings because uh, I <laughs> I know there's a pretty there's a pretty cool story there. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, you and I met, gosh, 60, 90 days ago for the first yeah. time, and uh, I was at kind of one of the first kickoff conferences of this blur of a conference season <laughs> that we've been on, and then I think we've seen each other twice since then, and. Uh, uh, each time we kind of had a, a chance to go a little deeper in conversation, even though yeah. we didn't get deep into uh, into uh, the business side of things. But I think you have a cool story. Uh, I know you have a cool story, a couple cool stories that we're going to talk about. Um, but let's first talk about Active Comply, the company you work for. And for our audience that may not know uh, Active Comply or what you do, kind of tell us who you guys are. Yeah, perfect. And again, I'm really glad to be here and, and glad we got to connect at the conference. Like you said, it it's definitely been a blur and I'll be in Texas starting Sunday uh, and, and then California and then it, it just keeps going. But it's it's fun to get to connect. So, yeah, um, Active Comply, what we do is we're an automation solution at our core, really geared around social media monitoring and compliance. And so. Uh, we have a foundation of compliance, and, and the purpose of this tool is to automate the back end of things uh, in terms of regulatory compliance, right, and really kind of unlock the power of social media, which is so important right now in reaching the next generation of consumers. So what Active Comply does is we go out and find all of your company's social media uh, and bring it into our solution, and then you get the choice of, hey, we want to monitor that and archive all of that material material, not just on the LinkedIn's, the Facebook's, the Instagram's, but on 10 different social media platforms, soon to be 11 with some other partnerships that we got in place. Um, so we're creating a, a workflow, one that makes the job of compliance much easier uh, and kind of handling social media, which it also is unifying that marketing piece of this where marketing wants to go and LOs want to go and post and share and educate, right? Coming from somebody who really didn't know a lick about buying a home until 2019 when I bought my first home, which I'm very fortunate that, that I did. Um, now social media plays such a big role in, in how people get educated and, and how they learn. Right. And by being able to create those guardrails on the back end by automating the state regulations, the company licensing information, the archiving of content that's being shared, uh, we're allowing those LOs to kind of operate a little bit more freely within the guardrails because compliance now has the tools to where everything is automated, yeah. including the outreach as well. Right. Uh, making sure things are up to the regulatory snuff. So. Uh, and it's it's really cool because we're an integrated solution as well. Yeah, there's and there's a there's so much there. Let's let's start to unpack it a little sure. bit. I have, <clears throat> I'll say, um, you know, limited knowledge um, in in the space, but I do understand. I came from prior to my current role at Finlocker. I came from a regulated financial institution, and in the business that that I ran was mortgage. <laughs> um, and so I, I uh, painfully understand um, the challenges that marketers and salespeople have in staying within the guardrails of a, of a bank compliance operation. Uh, but, I, but I think it's worth kind of talking about um, the risk side first because, you know, I think most people think about things like this in the risk context and they, they, they – uh, they think all oh, that only applies to big companies or big banks. And I would argue that no matter the size of, of, of your company as a, a mortgage company, you could be a, you know, a $50 billion a year um, national retail lender, or you could be a $50 million a year three person mortgage brokerage shop. If you're, if you're using social media as part of your engagement outreach, marketing, there is risk that you have. And, and I, I, 
I sense that your tool can kind of scale for all sizes of companies. So let's maybe talk a little bit about that risk first and yeah. what are some of those kind of risk items that uh, that lenders should be thinking about? Well, there there's a number of them for one. And I think you brought up a really good point of, of if you're utilizing social media and allowing it and to the point of in today's marketing, if you're not, you're going to fall behind, right? Because it, it, and and we've right. seen a, the mortgage lender side of things. They've been utilizing social media for quite some time. But on the banking side, it's much less common because it's been too risky. So when you dive into that right. risk, uh, certainly on the mortgage lender side of things, every state is abs- is different in, in what the important things that they're looking for. Like, for example, in the state of Virginia, if you don't have the proper font size, in your disclosures and the company disclosures and the state disclosures, and you don't have the licensing information, that can be up to a $20,000 fine per page that they're finding. And we've seen a number of different lenders who've fallen victim to that uh, in the state of Virginia. Another example of that risk is, is a lot of these emerging platforms like TikTok being one, where that's where the next generation of home buyers gets their news. Right. That's where the 21, 22 year right. olds who maybe haven't even thought about buying a home learn that, hey, that can actually be a reality at a younger age, which coming from somebody who didn't buy a home till 30, I didn't even know how easy it, that that they really do make it to buy a home if you do have the means. So um, and, and it's really difficult because those platforms have limited space. TikTok only has 140 characters where you can, you're can you supposed to house your company NMLS, your individual NMLS ID, the equal housing logo. If you're on the banking side of things, right, it's the FDIC information and, and fair lending, all of those different disclosures that you have to have. And so what we do is we automate that piece of it and, and we make it really easy. So another point of risk is RESPA is a huge one right now, right? kickbacks, referrals, those type of things. There's there's a platform out there called Alignable uh, that not many folks are, are, are really aware of. And as I mentioned, we, we're not just servicing the big four social media companies. It's 10 different platforms, the TikToks, the Alignables. And, and Alignable is called a small business referral website, which makes the compliance community a bit itchy when you hear any time yeah. of referral, right? And, and one of the things that comes, it's, it's, con- it's a contagious platform in that if I'm an LO, right, Chase Connor at ABC Mortgage, I sign up for an Alignable page. One, the name of the page is the name of the company, so ABC Mortgage. And then when I create an account, it says, great, do you wanna invite your address book? So before you know it, you've got LOAs, assistants, those type of folks that are getting invites from LOs to Alignable, and it's okay because you know a top producer is sending us an invite here. Um, and then the last piece of, of Alignable that I like to touch on is they have this Our Ideal Customer section where it's a free form text section where uh, you can sim- we've seen things from demographic information, right? We've seen geographic information. We've seen looking for single mothers to buy a home who are looking to buy a home, which yeah. uh, that's a big red <laughs> flag, right? And, and so keeping into account all of the the different moving pieces and the constant evolving nature of social media, uh, it's also very top of mind for us. We're not just trying to automate and save time and money. We're also trying to create the guardrails to enable the sales team to utilize social media to reach that next level of consumer. Um, And by mitigating a lot of that risk, you're giving marketing the tools to kind of coach and teach and help their LOs to engage further in the platform. And I think one of the most important things and one of the most unique features that Active Comply has is we don't require buy-in from uh, the LO side of things or the salesperson side of things. Um, There's plenty of companies that we're partnering with and working with out there that allow for posting and campaigns and content and those type of things. That's not what we want to specialize in because we know that there's companies that are centered around that. So we can work well with them by automating the back end of the compliance on the whole piece of it. So um, it's really a combination of, of unifying the, the marketing and the compliance team to unlock social media in such a way that um, it's supporting your LOs through compliance, which is, I think, a unique view 
on compliance that not yeah. many companies have. And, and c- coming from a salesperson, not many salespeople have. Um, and, and we've found right. a lot of mass success, su- massive success in taking that approach as well. So um, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and just, and, and I think I understand a, a, some of the risk. Uh, and and then my question would be, is this something you guys solve for? So <clears throat> there are words, there are, there are red flag words or keywords yeah. um, that loan officers, companies may use that create potential compliance and regulatory risk. And sure. frankly, I suspect, I suspect that the, the, the regulatory bodies out there are look, they probably have a tool like active comply to go find the same stuff that you guys are monitoring. Right. Yeah. And so when you say you're monitoring, when you're monitoring uh, social media ac- accounts or posts, is your tool actually looking at the words on the post and identifying potential risk and what the words are? Yes, absolutely. So we've got kind of a, a built out uh, system of about 80 keywords and phrases, anything from cred. Uh, credit, debt, rate, uh, best rates possible. Uh, and those are highly customizable yeah. to directly to the risk tolerance level of the lender or bank that we are working with. So, and, and not only that, but we're also using OCR technology to scan the images that are being shared by those LOs. So, I mean, I found a, I found a cool infographic talking about APR and, and I really love it and I hit share before you know it, it's on three or four platforms. So we're even extracting those words and image off of the infographics and images, which are so prevalent in social media today, because it's two, three second yeah. digestible content. Um, so, so yes, we flag that and even taking it to another level, everything that's be- coming through the active comply system in which everything that we're monitoring is automatically archived. Uh, so we're not just helping the compliance, but we're also able to help the audit team because when you get a state audit that says, hey, I need all of your social media advertising for the last three years and every state's different, Nevada, you need to keep everything for all time. All you need to do is send us what that examiner needs and we extract it and get it back to you within 24 hours in a format that the examiner needs. So we make audits, which can be painful, really, really easy as well by taking that burden off of the actual lender or bank. So that's a great question. Right. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I mean, I mean, imagine, imagine absent a tool like Active Comply, if, if you get that request from the auditor, what are you literally doing? You're going into your, your Twitter account and going back in time and doing screenshots of every post you've ever done, and it's crazy. I mean, you've got to have a team of, it's basically all hands on deck at that point, you know, and a lot of lenders and banks out there operating off of spreadsheets, right? They have links and they have to go through and take screenshots. And it's, it's a lot of resources that have to be diverted into that, into a process that we automate from initial monitoring and discovery all the way to corrective action, right? And emailing an LO and saying, hey, you need to add your NMLS ID to your profile so that you're within compliance. So uh, from start to finish, we're going to automate the the different pieces of this puzzle. I love it. You kind of hit on a question I had earlier, which was, uh, you know, I'm I'm aware of some other platforms that help with the content creation and distribution. And it sounds like you're not necessarily a takeout for those, and maybe you do have some of that functionality, but but rather you can ride alongside and 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 ensure that that platform is is remaining compliant for that lender who's who's working with them. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and we and no to your point, we don't focus on content creation or posting and those type of things simply because that. It's going to create more hoops to jump through in order to monitor all of that social media out there. And that takes away from the value of what we really do, which is a robust monitoring and compliance solution. Yes, it does offer sales enablement through really giving the proper tools to the departments. And, you know, even some of the largest lenders that we work with, with 2000 loan officers, it takes one person to handle social media monitoring for all of those. Yeah, that's. That's amazing. So a big time saver. So that's the, that's the, yeah, that's the big company, the large monster, you know, company. How is there such a thing as a too small of a company to, to work with you? Or do you guys kind of 
scale up and down. Yeah, uh, we've got the mom and pop lenders, the community banks, all the way up to, you know, the largest lenders in the country and the biggest banks in the United States. And so it's very scalable in what we do. And, and for a lot of the smaller banking side of things, it's Active Comply is going to be the tool that allows them to tap into social media and, and let their loan officers, right. let their sales team utilize the tool. Because up to this point, it, it's not worth the risk for many of them. Uh, and I think as we're right. starting to see a change in the industry, margins are compressing and, and LOs are going to turn to every avenue that they can. And they're going to use social media, whether you want it or not. And That's right. so we're not just looking at what you know about. Uh, often, More often than not, we're going to find those rogue websites that, uh, that LOs have or, or non-secure links that are directing the consumer to a, a personal side business on their social media, right? We've seen... Yeah. We've seen a, a link to a page that's sending somebody to a stem cell pill uh, <laughs> research. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been all over the place. But so, so yeah, it, it's not just for what you know about, but it's it's to kind of get ahead and take a very proactive approach to the things that you maybe weren't aware of in the industry and in terms of social media. I love it. I I uh, I would encourage anybody that's uh, watching listening to us who is responsible for, you know, management, uh, risk management, production management to think about, or at least take an introspective look at how, how you're managing your team's activities on social media. And if you, if you don't have a strategy, you should, you should reach out to chase and the active comply mm -hmm. team. Um, because this, I actually think this is the stuff that is the next, it's kind of the next place where regulators, are going to find the uh, gotchas, right? Yeah. Um, and they're already doing it. This, there's, you know, if, if we don't believe that the CFPB doesn't have a full-time staff monitoring social media, then we're a little, we're, we've got our heads in the sand. Yeah. And, and to that, I think you, so, you touched on something earlier where you were like, I'm sure the, you know, the regulators and the examiners, they have a tool like us. We are staying on the side of the lenders and the banks, uh, <laughs> for sure, just yeah, yeah, to yeah. let everybody know. We're not playing both sides of the fence. Uh, but it is it is really important. Uh, and, and, you know, we also have got some really innovating things coming out uh, that uh, no other companies out there are doing yet. So uh, I can't speak much on yeah. it, but you're going to hear more in the near future of what we're doing uh, in terms of... Um, you know, tackling the remote worker space and, and the compliance. Right. And that I love thing. it. So, yeah. Very cool. So now I want to pivot. A, okay. This will be a radical pivot in our conversation. It's kind of fun. <clears throat> um, so you and I met, as we said, at a, at a industry conference a few months back, and I think it was probably at one of the, uh, the highly engaging networking sessions, also known as the post busy day cocktail party. <laughs> and, uh, you were there was a group of us kind of just chatting or whatever, and all of a sudden I start hearing talk about kickball, and I'm like, yeah. kickball? I haven't played kickball since sixth grade. Who, who plays kickball? Right. And lo and behold, Chase Connor is a professional kickball player, <laughs> um, and uh, you, I mean, it's not like this isn't the neighborhood YMCA, right? Adult, you know, kickball league. This is like legit travel around the country playing yeah. tournaments. Perhaps travel in a in your remote home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, tell tell us a little bit about tell tell us about your your kickball career and and kind of how that got going and and for those that aren't aware that this is a thing, let's let's hear about it. Yeah. So you know, uh, I'm I'm one of those wildly ambitious people, right? I always have been my whole life, and <laughs> and one of the dreams that I always had was I wanted to be a professional athlete, like so many people. And, uh, but being under six foot and, uh, and not super fast and, and crazy athletic, I, I didn't have really the tools to become a professional athlete. And uh, I played football and, and sports all through my life. And then about five or six years ago, I kind of got into a local kickball league, a very social thing. And that competitive thing that I have in my mind, it kind of took over and, uh, I found out that there's a competitive aspect of this. And so for the last five years, uh, I've been traveling around in my spare time playing kickball professionally. Uh, there's a kind of a community of about 
I don't know, I'd say 2,000, 2,500 people. Uh, and for the last four or five years, about once a month, I travel to a different city and play kickball professionally. And it's, it's not the schoolyard kickball. It's, it's athletes and it's co-ed <laughs> that people are throwing the ball 50 plus miles an hour. Right. And, uh, right. and it's been a lot of fun and I really fell in love with it, uh, and fell in love with the friends and the people that I was able to make. And, and now it's even evolved even more. Um, I, I've, have the privilege of leading and captaining a team, which is something that's, I think, leading people and developing as a leader and being able to motivate people is something that uh, I've always had in me. But but being able to build something organically uh, from in the city that I live in, uh, that's that I call home, which is Orlando, uh, has been really, really special. And so that's what I do in my spare time. And I get to kind of live my dream of being a professional athlete. Now, I, there's not much money in it. You know, you can make you make money if you win, <laughs> if you win the tournament. So, yeah, uh, there there's been a bit of self-funded travel and those things. But um, but there's just there's nothing better than uh, going in with a group of people and and grinding and committing and working together and then coming out victorious on the end of it. So for me, right. it's uh, the ability to chase that. Uh, that dream a bit has been really special and you know, it's, it's something unique, but yeah, it's, it's a growing sport too. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of fun and well, you it, know, it, it's uh, yeah, I love it. And it's, it's why we're talking. Cause that's what, for me, it was like, oh, I got to talk to this guy. I got to learn about, I've got to learn about this kickball thing. Yeah. It's uh it's fun, man. And actually, uh, I don't know, were you down at TMC? We, we, were you down at TMC Miami, which was an off, awesome, yes. awesome conference. So Actually, going into TMC Miami, we had a tournament uh, in Miami that Saturday, oh. and uh, and came out victorious and won the tournament undefe in an undefeated fashion yeah. with our local team. <laughs> uh, and so I got to kind of go into that weekend, which was already going to be such a great place for people to connect and grow and meet. And uh, I got to go into that off of uh, off of a high of leading a team to victory, and so uh, it was cool and. To kind of transition into, you know, the the RV piece of things, um, yeah, it's a funny story because the RV that I'm going to be that I'm nomading in for the short term. Which, by the way, I I want to talk a little bit more about our company towards the end and, and Active Comply because we have a very yeah, unique yeah, yeah. model. But and my company has given full support right? Well, as long as we're continuing to grow and producing and those types of things as with any company. But um, <laughs> I had this idea and I've always wanted the, the, to be able to kind of have the freedom to go and do and to travel and do those things. And um, I had a near death experience last year in June. Uh, it was a freak accident, went into crazy anaphylaxis out of nowhere. And after that, it I made I had this idea. I'm like, I want to go and travel in an RV and work remote. And I made two phone calls and an RV was delivered to me at no cost to me that oh. already happened to have a picture of me on the back of the bus because I was one of the athletes that they chose. <laughs> I was one of the athletes that they chose to put on the wrap on the RV. And so to me, it was kind of an omen of like, yeah, this is what you need to do. Um, and, and now I, right. did it for a, I did it for a month in uh, February. And I really just fell in love with it because of the space it creates, uh, the minimal kind of living that that you're able to do. And uh, and as of uh, two weeks ago today, I left my house in Orlando, uh, ready to rent out, uh, you know, get another side business going on, rental property business. And I'm coming into yeah. the RV full time, at least for the summer. Uh, and, and hopes to buy another property right. and, and those type of things uh, with really the focus of, of grinding and growing this business and, and expanding our company and what we're doing and then focusing on that mind, body, soul connection and my dogs. So right. it's the, if I can focus on yeah. those three things, uh, it, it opens up so much more space to kind of grow and evolve and change and, and learn and uh, it, it became very clear that that's what I wanted to do. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun, man. I, I'm also very fortunate and blessed to be able to do things like this and kind of live that dream. Sure. So. 
Well, I, yeah. I, I think I, re I recall you you telling me when we were at one of the conferences that the uh, what you get when you're in that situation is no, you know, it's minimalist, right? And so there's no distractions that, that you would have had in your in, at your home. And you, you just, I think you said your mind is is like opened up and just you get so creative and productive around in that environment. So that's super yeah. cool. It's it's. 10 minutes and everything is in its place as it should deep cleaned organized no matter and it's kind of that uh that mentality of addition by subtraction like what can i remove from the yeah. path in order to add value into the day-to-day -day of what i'm doing and and so I've, I've tried to set it up to go down that path with workout equipment and and being in nature and and making sure that i have internet connection but if i have those things I can do whatever I need to do. Yeah. So, You're good. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a Amazing. fun story too. Well, right. Chase, we got a few minutes. Yeah. We got a few minutes left. Uh, we, we've covered a ton of ground, which is super cool. Anything else you want to share about active comply before we wrap for the day? Yeah. I, I think I'd be doing a disservice without highlighting the team that we have. So we're at uh, eight team members now and I'm, 32 years old, and I am the oldest team member on the team outside of our executive members. So we're a, a startup it. company that is really run by young pro professionals. And, and one of my counterparts, Melissa Thomas, is quickly rising through the ranks in the compliance community and doing really well. And I'm sure everyone has seen Blake Boss all over social media yeah. with his beautiful, handsome head of hair that he has that I'm envious <laughs> of from time to time. Um, and so being able to build and scale a company with uh, people in, the, in that young age group has been really fulfilling. And, and back to kind of the beginning, I was employee number two and how I got into the mortgage business uh, was I lost my job during COVID as many people did, uh, had to take some downtime to figure out what I wanted to do. And my neighbor uh, was CEO of a top 25 mortgage company. And he's like, Hey, what, you know, what do you want to do? And let me let me connect you with uh, my chief of sales, right? I think you'd be great at mortgage. And he connected me. He's like, yeah, well, do, you'll do really well. And I actually, I passed on it. And I said, I've been in startups for the last five years. And I, and I re really, truly love it. Yeah. And I want to be, I want to scale one of those companies up. And he said, you know, I've got another project that I'm working on that I think you might fit into. And so July will mark two years in the mortgage industry for me. Uh, so I'm still learning wow. every single day and, and, you know, and, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have a phenomenal team and a phenomenal product. So I think it was a unique path in for me, but one of the things that I've learned, and I, I like to take the big picture and simplify it down to what makes this mortgage industry so special. Um, and all the way from the mortgage companies to the technology companies. And I, I've simplified it down to the fact that so that, the majority of folks in this industry are in this industry because they want to help people and they want to help people realize that right. dream of owning a home. And as we've seen through all of these conferences that it just brings people together uh, in such a way that it creates a space for individuals to help other individuals grow and grow their business without kind of putting your own personal gains in, in front of it. And I think that's one of the yeah. things that I've taken from the mortgage industry that's just so special. And I really, really love it. I love it, man. That's we can't end on a better tone and note than that. So, thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming thank on, you, Chase. Man. Love learning about Active Comply. Super pumped about this new pro athlete that I have a relationship <laughs> with, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, get to see you uh, at your home someday in the in the back parking lot of the Marriott in right. your uh, in your RV. So. Right. Maybe we can convince Active Comply to wrap an RV for me, and I'll travel around to the different conferences. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much, man. I really enjoyed awesome. it. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you, Chase. And we'll we'll see everybody next week on FinTech Fridays. See ya. Cool. Awesome. Good job, dude. That was perfect. Thanks, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it. It was cool. Yeah. I enjoyed super, it. Super super cash. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. Um, like I said, it's my first one. So, so you should see in a, in a minute. You should see.